What's up guys? Uh, this is a video about how to fix your Ender 3 Thermistor, Thermistor Runaway problem. Uh, guaranteed fix. Promise you. <laughs> I'll give you a solution to whatever the problem is. I, uh, I'm making this video because I, I, I had a Thermistor Runaway problem when I first got this Ender 3 after a few months. And I searched YouTube up and down watched I don't know how many videos and nobody had really the right answer other than replace your thermistor so once I figured out what the problem was I come I went back and commented on almost all of those videos and now almost every day I get one to two comments of people thanking me telling me it fixed their problem or asking more questions about it so I'm making this video so Here's what's, here's what's happening. I'm just, first, I'm going to explain it to you. Your hot end is this on your Ender 3. You have a thermistor. It reads the temperature. They use a, a thermal paste around the thermistor when it goes in the hole. The, the thermal paste will get old, dry out, wear out, whatever. It goes bad, and you start having thermal runaway problems. You have to take that glass bead thermistor out, clean it really good, and clean out the hole really good. You have to take like a sewing needle and go in that hole and clean it out really good because it's got threads in there. And then and then you put your glass bead thermistor back in, put your screw back in, and that, that will solve your problem at least for a while. For some reason, you'll, you'll keep having the problem after so many months, it'll come back. I got tired of it and replaced the whole thing, and I'll show you a really cheap version, upgraded version of what you can do. So let's get into it. Here is my old original thermistor. Uh, I mean my hot end. Right here is the thermistor. There's a screw right here you have to take out. And then these two wires are hooked to a little glass bead that shoves up into this hole. That, that when you pull this screw out, there's a, there's a tiny little hole there that a, the thermistor goes in. When you, you have to heat it up, pull that out, a lot of times you'll run it pulling it out, but if you heat it up pretty good, usually you can get it out if you kind of easy with it. Clean it really good, stick it back in, put the screw back in, and that should solve your problem for about six months. But it will come back, I promise you. Okay. Here is my upgraded version. Now I'm going to show it to you on Amazon. It's $15.99 from Amazon, and you get a complete kit. It is an upgraded version. You get a you get a complete hot end. You get five extra nozzles. You get a wrench. You get two extra heat blocks. You get three extra uh, silicone heat shields. You get a long piece of Bowden tube, and you get a screw in heater block, and you get a screw in brass thermistor. And when I mean screw in. I mean, it does. It's not a glass bead like this anymore. You you probably can't you can't see it's too dark, but this is a brass one. I don't know if I'm. Gonna, I don't know if there's any way for you to see it. This thing comes. This thing comes fully assembled. All you have to do is hook it up. So I just took my old one off and put my new one on. But. Uh, it has, when you pull that screw out, you just screw your new thermistor right in place. It doesn't stick in anymore, it screws in. And since it screws in, you don't need any thermal paste, and it makes complete good connection. So you don't have the problem anymore of, of the heat fluctuating up and down so bad. But you don't even have to do that if you buy this kit, because if you buy this kit, it, it comes completely assembled. Now, if you buy just the thermistor, it's probably going to cost you as much as this kit or more, or close to it, and then you'll have to do your own thing. But if you buy this kit right here from Amazon, I've had this kit on now for a while. You can see it's all dusty and everything. Uh, it, it's, it's been flawless. haven't had any problems with it. Now, I did splice my wires when I put this one on. It's got plugins on it, and I didn't even check to see if the plugins were right. I just pulled this tubing back right here 
and just splash my wires in. You can't screw it up. If that's the way you want to go, I think the plugins are right for an Ender 3. But if you don't want to do that and just splash it in like I did to make your wires whatever length you wanted because I wanted longer wires, your thermistor will have two tiny little wires like this. You can't cross them. It doesn't matter which one goes where. As long as these two wires from your old thermistor go to the two little white wires of your new thermistor. You can't cross them up. Just as long as you hook them up. Uh, hook one to one and one to the other and it doesn't matter. It doesn't have a positive and a negative. Your heat blocks the same way. You've got two big white wires here and you've got two big red wires on your original one. Just cut them, splice them in. It doesn't matter which direction you do it. It will work. Here's the uh, here's the parts left out of my box from from the upgraded one that I bought. You see it comes with two extra blocks. I didn't even use the Bowden tube because I had some of this blue tubing. Uh, still got two silicone things and I got new nozzles in there. It comes with everything you need, guys. So if you're having thermal runaways, unless you've got in there and screwed around with your uh, well, I don't even see how that would do it. The only way I can see you would have a thermal runaway is if your thermistor is going bad or it's not making a good connection. So the first thing I would try is the connection thing with cleaning off the the uh, thermal paste. But if you want to solve it completely, get the kit. All right, guys, I hope this helps somebody. I got tired of uh, answering people's questions. Now I can just send them to this video. You guys have a great day.